Welcome to another episode We're coming at you from ChooseYourRelationships.com, author of Love Can't Wait, which can be found on Amazon.com. So today I have another Don't special guest. Marco, Before Marco, I get into that, like, share this episode. And if you have any questions or any concerns or any topics you want me to talk about, just go to my website at ChooseYourRelationships.com. Dot com and click on the contact tab and you can send me all your questions anything you want to talk about to my email so with that being said my special guest today she has 15 years of experience in education creating a holistic picture of health and wellness her background is in skin therapy clinical hypnotherapy and energy healing she currently has a practice as a personal expansion specialist, supporting clients living their life on purpose. She has developed her own healing program where she takes clients through. She, she is also a best-selling author. Her passion is to flood the earth with love and teach people about proactive health in all aspects of their life. Our special guest today is Harmony Woodington, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast today. Yeah, again, thanks take, for taking time to do this again. So, so where are you from? I am from Vancouver, BC, Canada, <laughs> or Canada. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So, so how did you um how did you get started? Uh, did you always want to become wanted to become a hypnotherapist and a healer? How did you get started? Definitely not. No, <laughs> I don't know how many people come out of the womb saying I want to hypnotize people. <laughs> um, it definitely was a very interesting journey that got me to where I am. I actually um, was raised uh, by a mother that was so severely abused her whole childhood that she was incapable of really uh, giving me the love that I needed as a child. And we had a very tumultuous relationship to put it gently. Um, and my father was actually born in Wales post Second World War to a father who served in the Second World War and had severe PTSD in a time when PTSD wasn't a recognized issue. And so all of uh, my grandfather's children that he had, of six he had in total, all have serious mental health issues. So my father um, is actually and has been most of his life severely depressed and suicidal. So my father wasn't capable of giving me the love that um, I needed either. So I had both parents incapacitated by mental health issues. Mm. So I grew up in a very wonderful upbringing. Um, <laughs> and it was, a, it was a perfect recipe for me to um, really end up going on a journey to try to discover how to create resolution for myself. And the missing puzzle piece that actually sent me on the path that I was on was I was actually raised uh, Mormon. I was raised a particular type of Christianity. And when my father uh, tried to end his life in 2015 and I ended up uh, putting him in a facility to be looked after, um, we had conversations that actually took me out of the particular faith that I had been raised in and living for 33 years. And then I was having a massive existential crisis amongst dealing with mental health issues. Now, the thing that I also didn't mention was at the same time as my father was in a facility being looked after, my life's partner's father also ended up hospitalized with liver cancer. So there was a lot of stuff that kind of went on at the same time that created a cornucopia that kind of put me in a place where i felt like an egg that was so fragile and i'm not talking about an egg with everything in it i'm talking about an eggshell that's been empty that you can just tap and it'll break into a million pieces that was kind of how i felt at that moment um i had to fly to toronto now being in vancouver toronto's pretty much across the country it's a five-hour flight so I was in the hospital in Toronto and that was where I kind of hit my breaking point. And I ended up going to the traditional model of psychological support and ended up discovering that I didn't actually have the answers that I needed at the time because not only was it a mental health crisis I was having, 
but I was having a spiritual crisis at the same time and I needed some way to find answers to literally just kind of redesign myself as a human um, because who it was that I was at the time was very much defined by and dictated by the faith that I was raised in. So I no longer knew who I was as a person. <laughs> um, so that was a big deal. So I took a time out to mourn the loss of who I thought I was, to be honest, and then open the doors to seek answers that were outside of the traditional model of psychology and what our world dictates we should look to for answers. And I ended up in a circle of people um, and this lovely woman actually ended up facilitating and she played with oracle cards, uh, which were very triggering for me at the time because I was taught to believe that oracle cards were evil. I've learned now to understand that it's just information on paper and it's up to us to decide what it means to us. Um, paper and words on paper can't be evil. So kind of weird that we ascribe these attachments to it, but it's what I was taught. And also at the time, she did what she called a guided visualization. She hypnotized us. <laughs> I went into a deep state of hypnosis. And I had never experienced being hypnotized. But I'm going to tell you right now that I went into that hypnosis feeling powerless and lost. Mm -hmm. I came out of that hypnosis feeling powerful. And like I knew it was going to be okay and I didn't know how. And that pivotal, powerful change sent me on a path to not just experience hypnotherapy for myself, but when I become really passionate about something, not only do I want to experience it, I want to become it because I'm really passionate as a human. So I decided to become a hypnotherapist and I studied clinical hypnotherapy. And then as I was working with clients and, and as um, you said in my bio, I was um, an esthetician prior to so before I became a clinical hypnotherapist, I was actually doing eyelash extensions from my home. And uh, that was residual from being in a car accident. And I had been working in a spa prior to, but I wasn't able to work in the spa because I was in a major four car accident and taken out of my life. That's another story. <laughs> I have so many refining fires. So I had all of these people literally laying on a bed with their eyes closed with blind trust for me that I was doing eyelash extensions on. So I had a lineup of people that I could hypnotize. It was great. <laughs> so the so one translated into the other beautifully. And I had a particular experience with a young uh, woman. She was 27 years old. And I did um, a hypnosis on her to take her back to see herself at about seven years of age. And in that state, she was already very self-loathing and she was looking at that little seven-year-old girl and she was saying horrible things about her and she was hating on her. And I could feel that there was extreme trauma in this uh, client that I was doing the hypnosis on and I could feel that ball of energy in my solar plexus, so in my gut. And it was so powerful, it brought me to tears and I didn't know what to do with that experience at all. I felt powerless and I felt lost. And I knew that I needed to do something to learn how to engage, to help clients to release that energy. And so I ended up walking a path to discover how to engage energetically to support my clients. And that was when I ended up uh, certifying in multiple energy healing modalities to learn how to hold space. Now I want to be very clear when it comes to the energy healing. I am not doing the work. I am holding space for my clients to do the work. I am essentially a placebo. My my um, brother-in-law called me a placebo one time and I was like, oh my gosh, you are so spot on. I'm totally the placebo that, that holds space for you to believe that you can do the work and then you do the work. So it's a beautiful way to actually describe what I do. So I ended up actually creating a program that holistically supported my clients learning how to engage with the brilliance in their own mind to create a harmonious relationship with their own mind and to learn how to engage with their body and their energy body to shift and change programs that are no longer serving them and to release energy that is trapped in our energy body and in our body that needs to be released that is incongruent so that we can have a healthy body a healthy life 
and a beautiful, healthy relationship with our mental operating system, with our mind, because it is much like a computer and a cell phone. And we update our cell phones and our computers how often? Like once a month? I think our cell phone updates about once a month, right? Yeah. When was the last time you updated your brain? <laughs> for, most right? people, for most people, it hasn't happened since high school. <laughs> right? Exa exactly. And so I ended up realizing that this is something that actually needs to be done on a regular basis, that we do have a mental operating system and that we need to learn how to work with it and find those outdated programs that were created when we were a child that are actually holding us back from creating what we want to create in this life. And when we learn how to do that, believe it or not, it's significantly easier than you think we can create new programs that are in service of our current agenda. And if you do this on a regular basis, then the 95% of your mind, which is the most powerful part of your mind and is creating your reality, can work with you to create what you want. So that the 5% is just being there making decisions from a logical perspective and everything is working harmoniously for you to create that reality that is serving your divine design, your current agenda, your dreams, your goals, your passions, whatever it is that you want to create in this life, you can do so with ease. Yeah, so you've been through a lot. Oh, my goodness. Harmony, you've been through a lot. So I've had a hot refining fire to say the least, yes. Yeah. So when you got hypnotized, what shifted in your mind? What's really interesting about hypnosis is there are two types of minds that are developed as a result of our parenting. There is a physical and there is an emotional. The physical receives everything very literally and the emo receives everything on inference and the emo has a feeling or a need to be in control and is harder to hypnotize whereas the fizz takes everything literally and goes into hypnosis very easily and very deep. I am a fizz and as a result of that, when she did the hypnosis, I actually went so deep I don't remember what was said. I don't remember what happened. I just remember going in feeling very powerless, feeling lost, not knowing how to create resolution and feeling very broken and I just remember coming out feeling like I knew everything was going to be okay and I didn't know how and I remember going home and kissing my my partner at the time and he was like what was that about because you can feel it when your partner has shifts when they kiss you right it's so much is communicated in a kiss and he's like what is going on and i'm like it's going to be okay and he's like what do you mean i'm like it's going to be okay i just know it's going to be okay and he's like how and i'm like i don't know i just know i have it in me to to make it okay and that was all i knew and i just from there on just started to um, say yes to inspiration as it flowed and say yes to people when they came into my life. And I just said yes to all opportunities that came into my life and fearlessly yeah. because we have people, we have opportunities that come into our life. And a lot of the time for fear of failure, we say no. Yeah. And I, I no longer feared failure anymore because I had had enough things happen to me in my life that I said, you know what, the, the worst that can happen to me is failure. I can't die from this. And I almost did die from a car accident. So literally, I just don't have any fear anymore. So I just started to say yes. And everything came together. And here I am with a successful business, a best selling book, and everything else to go with it. I have a beautiful world now just because I keep, say keep saying yes. <laughs> yeah, it's you know it's it's, it's funny how it I've been on both sides of that. I've, I've been lived in fear for a long time, and then now, probably for I'm say probably 15 years now, every everything is everything usually just works works itself out some way somehow. You know, uh, I just say yes. I you know get in front of the right people around the right people, and things just kind of keep happening you know <laughs> that's so uh, you know so what's a, um what's a hip, what's hypnotherapy tell a lot of people that because a lot of people might say hey man that sounds like some new age stuff man i don't know you know <laughs> I, I, I mean i know better but tell people what that what's that what's hypnotherapy so what's really interesting about um hypnosis and hypnotherapy is 
The world of mesmerism and hypnosis and such has been around for over 5,000 years in human history. Uh, back in the day, in ancient history, there were oracles. Yep. And oracles would actually use all sorts of plants and things that would put them in a deep state of hypnosis that would, they believe, allow them to tap into the gods and the goddesses and divine powers to receive divination for the king. So when he would go into battle, he would speak to the oracle who was in a, a particular mindset and she would give divination to the leader of whatever it was to tell him what he needed to be and do. And there are also many temples where they would go to places where they would use diffused plants and stuff like that to put people into a deep state of hypnosis for healing and stuff like that. Um, and then so on, it, it then filtered into um, doctors then playing around with mesmerism and hypnosis for healing states as well. Now here's what's really interesting, and I don't know how many people know this, but Dr. Freud himself researched and played with hypnosis, and he actually ended up saying that hypnosis has no place in psychology, which is why hypnotherapy actually isn't a part of clinical practice. And then his student, Erickson, actually then took it and said, you know, I think Freud might be off on this. And he continued to study and he created Ericksonian hypnotherapy. So he would be what I consider to be the grandfather of hypnosis. And then John Kappas, who was the next generation, which I don't know how many people know uh, the name of, he actually would be what I consider to be the father of hypnosis. What he did was actually write the book on suggestibility. So how our minds are programmed and how we input and output information. And he actually received his doctorate, doctorate through doing this. And then his grands or his son, George Kappas, took over the school that he created and is continuing his work. So the work that I actually learned was through uh, John Kappas' teaching. So I learned uh, what they call Kappasonian hypnotherapy. And fortunately, through his school, they taught the background and the history of hypnosis, which is why I have the education that I have. Now, what I want people to understand when it comes to hypnosis is you are significantly more suggestible to yourself than you are to me. So what a hypnotherapist's job is, is to actually listen to you, your languaging, your suggestibility, how you communicate, and get you to actually come up with suggestions and thought processes that are actually fed back to you. So I'm not actually dictating anything to you. I'm actually just taking your languaging and feeding it back to you in the delta brainwave state. When we are in the delta brainwave, we actually bypass the critical mind and it allows for information to go into the subconscious mind completely unfiltered. This is how it essentially works. So a hypnotherapist's job is to guide the mind into that delta state and then for it, us to feed that information that you stated you wanted to go into your subconscious mind into your mind unfiltered. Here is another way that you can actually do this by yourself. I'm just going to bypass myself altogether so you don't even need me. <laughs> what you can actually do is if you want to update your mental operating system and you want to change a program, you can actually do it through repetition at night before you go to sleep. There are three ways to program the mind, trauma, authority, and repetition. So you can actually use repetition to reprogram your mind. So when you try to do, you know, everybody knows affirmations, right? A lot of people do affirmations to try to support themselves. Here's where we make a mistake, is we do the affirmations in the morning when we wake up because it puts us in a good mood and it motivates us and all the rest of that, right? No. I am never gonna tell anyone not to do affirmations in the morning. That being said, if you wanna update your mental operating system, you are, you're not doing it very effectively to put it gently because what happens is is the idea you just put into your mind or spoke is sitting in the conscious mind for an hour to an hour and a half then it goes down to the critical mind now the critical mind has a doorman or a bouncer is what i call it now this bouncer is going to look at this idea now let's just say one of the famous uh affirmations that people like to say is i am enough 
Now that is one of the most horrible affirmations that has ever been created in the history of humanity. Do you know why? No. Because you can finish that sentence. I am enough for another POS car. I'm enough for another horrible partner that abuses me. I'm enough for another piece of crap apartment. I'm enough for another horrible job that pays me nothing. You can finish the sentence, right? <laughs> so it's a horrible affirmation. So if you think about I am enough and you let it go into the critical mind, it sits there until you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And the bouncer looks at it and goes, I am enough, I am enough. Let me just check that and see if it's congruent. And then it looks at your programs and goes, Oh yeah, I'm enough for another piece of crap car. Perfect, yeah, we'll take that, right? <laughs> but if it's also incongruent, then it's gonna take it and it's gonna chuck it out the window. If you try to say, I am I am beautiful, and you believe yourself not to be beautiful, and there is a program that says, I'm ugly, then it's gonna look at that program and it's gonna go, no, I've already got a program down here that says I'm ugly, so it's gonna chuck it out the window and you're still gonna continue to believe that you're not enough. Now, if you do this programming, at night before you go to sleep. So if you say, I am beautiful, and you write it down on paper every night before you go to sleep, it bypasses that bouncer. It goes right into the, into the subconscious mind. So you can do this every night before you go to sleep through repetition, and you have to write it down. Don't just say it, write it down. You'll find yourself all of a sudden out of nowhere going, I'm beautiful, and believing it. So there's a little, a little hack for you. Damn, yeah, son, great. where'd so, you find this? How do you help people have more healthy relationships and more harmony? <laughs> Thank you so much for asking that. It's really interesting because I just told people they don't need me and I'm actually lying. You do. <laughs> so the way that I actually um, support my clients is teaching them how to create an unconditionally loving relationship with themselves. This is something that society doesn't teach us uh, at all, really, because society has an agenda. The big corporations have an agenda for us to self-loathe because if I believe that I'm lacking, then I'm going to go buy their products, right? Yep. So society is out there with an agenda for us to self-loathe. And what it does is it creates a cascade of issues in every aspect of our lives. It puts us in fear. We don't strive for our dreams. We don't uh, strive for a relationship or a, a one that we deserve. We don't strive for that person that we believe is beautiful because we tell ourselves that we're not worthy of that person. So we don't even ask them out, right? We don't apply for the jobs that we dream about working because we don't believe we're worthy of having that job. Well, there's so many things that we don't even try for because we have these limiting beliefs. And when you walk a path with an unconditionally loving cheerleader, with somebody who has zero judgment for you and sees you as a powerful divine being, there is just nothing more inspiring than being in that space. When you work with someone that has unconditional love for you and sees you as someone who is capable of everything and is just waiting for you to meet them there, you're gonna strive to meet them there, right? So, and I, I fortunately had the the experience of having somebody hold that space for me and i strived so much higher and worked so much harder for myself than i ever did when i didn't have that cheerleader in my life so somebody held that space for me and gave me that example and so that is what i do for my clients and i walk them through a path not just teaching them to create an unconditionally loving relationship with themselves but to optimize their physical health so that they can enjoy their life because if you have your health, you wish for everything. But if you don't have your health, you wish for one thing, right? Yeah. So we need to honor and love this physical vessel so that we can show up for everything we want to do in this life. And we can enjoy everything that shows up for us. Then we need to learn how to create a healthy foundation for all relationships that we have outside of us. And that was why I published the book that I published and I teach my clients how to create every type of relationship that they want and a healthy one at that, be it career, be it romance, be it friendships, be it familial, all relationships have a similar foundation. So my book, even though it's create a healthy romantic relationship, it does teach you the foundation to all healthy relationships. Then we focus on sexuality because we know that 2000 years ago, our sexuality was taken and controlled. And it is time for us to take that back because that is where our power resides. 
And when we learn how to create a healthy sexual relationship with ourselves and with other people, it is amazing how easy it is for us to own our power and become potent in whatever it is that we want to do in this life. So it is a powerful puzzle piece in the work that I do to support my clients. And there are not many coaches that honor that aspect. And I believe that it is important to honor that. So I love and cherish working with men and women to help them to own their sexuality and to learn how to create healthy relationships in that aspect. Women to learn how to blossom, men to learn how to hold space for a goddess to blossom, right? It is so important. Then we work on spirituality and I help my clients tap into the, the awareness of the fact that they are a divine being. And being a divine being, it means they are everything. And they are capable of tapping into the all you can eat buffet that is spirituality as much as they want and to spend the rest of their life tapping into that. Now next, obviously, is abundance and their relationship with finances. We all have programs attached to money. And it's very important to learn how to release any energy that's attached to that because we know how much anxiety, lack of money can create, right? <laughs> or maybe a lot of money because we're terrified we're just going to burn through it and it's going to yeah. disappear, right? Whether you have it or you don't have it, there's a lot of emotion attached to it. So when we learn how to dissipate and release that energy and we learn how to update our mental operating system so that we can call in the abundance that we need to fuel our dreams and our passions and to serve the world in the way that we know that we can, then we are set free, which is incredibly important. And then the last puzzle piece that I take my clients through is creating a life based on their own divine design, which is so powerful because I think we are raised being a performing monkey for other people, are we not? Everyone else has an agenda for us, but do we even know what our own agenda is? We're so busy serving everyone else, trying to make everybody else happy that I don't know when people stop to ask, wait, wait, what do, what do I want in this, right? So when you learn how to actually discover what it is that you're here on this planet to do in the first place, and then create your own life plan that is designed by you based on your happiness, which believe it or not, when people get in alignment with it more often than not is an agenda that is meant to serve humanity, to serve mother earth, to serve the animals on mother earth. It's always something so beautiful. Then we can take that and anchor it into the subconscious mind. So the 95% is putting that to work. It can be created with ease. So that's, Kind of a tidbit just a little dipping a toe into the work that i do <laughs> so hey what what made you want to write the book it's it really interesting because um so this book actually was originally an exercise that i created for a couple that were working together um with me on their relationship and i created it as an exercise to help them uh, individually create their own love arenas to get clarity on what each one of them wanted to create. And then they came together in session with me and shared their individual love arenas. And then we merged them together so that they could create a beautiful, uh, like-minded love arena together to work towards that. And before they were able to do that, both of them felt very lost not knowing what to do because they didn't feel unified in their vision, but they had no idea how to walk a process to get clarity to become unified. And their programs that had been created as a result of the different kinds of parenting that they had had actually had them at odds with each other. And they knew they loved each other, but they didn't know how to unify and how to reconcile their programming. And so at, at the start of it, it was just a workbook. And then COVID hit. <laughs> and we know what happened when COVID hit. Well, a lot of people were stuck together 24 seven. Some people were happy and they had a lot of fun and babies were made. We have a lot of COVID babies, <laughs> oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of babies, which is great. So great. I'm really happy for those couples that got to spend time together and have beautiful, beautiful time together. The couples, however, that were tolerating each other, all of a sudden found themselves not being able to handle being together 24 seven and those relationships ended. There was a massive surge of breakups and divorces in the first lockdown. Oh. And 
I ended up, as I, I haven't um, expressed this, and if you haven't read my book, you wouldn't know this, I'm actually in an open relationship you with my partner. We've been together for almost 10 years, and we date other people. We're polyamorous. Now, what's really interesting about that is, I ended up going out and dating people that were in different relationships or out of relationships. And I found myself on a beach with a married man. Now his wife had consented to him going on a date with me and oh. he was expressing his challenges in his marriage. And when I was talking to him about the foundations of a healthy relationship, we're sitting, we're standing in the water cause it's 45 degrees. It was really hot. The only place to be was in the water. He was saying, I really wish that I could, I could actually bring my wife here so she could listen to everything that you're saying because we both need this. Like, I, I feel like there is a breakdown in our relationship and we need this. And in that moment, I was like, I, I need to write this book. Everyone needs to know this. this. Everyone is struggling right now with their relationships. There is a massive relationship epidemic going on. And so uh, from the time that I decided that I was going to publish it to the day that it was published, it was five months. It happened really fast. And right. it became an over, it became an overnight, literally within 24 hours bestseller internationally, because obviously mm. there was a massive need for it. So another circumstance of, I was inspired. I said, yes, the universe supported me and boom, I had a bestseller. That's great. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the book, and I, I highly recommend uh, everybody go get it. I read a couple of probably two pages, and I was like, oh yeah, this is a good book. Yeah. <laughs> What's really beautiful about it is I want you guys to know just for how easy it is to listen to me. It's as easy as it is to read the book. I wrote that book so that it's conversational, and it's actually just like listening to me. I've had multiple people tell me when they've sat down and read the book, they've actually read it in one sitting because it flowed that easily. Yeah. Um, and you're gonna find yourself after you read the book getting to know me on a very, very deep level because I am fully transparent in this book because I believe that the best way to help people and to inspire people is to be completely transparent. Yeah, you know, um, we, you know, we need more people, more men and women out here like you. Yeah, baby! <laughs> You know, um, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not a it's not a lot of people. <laughs> At least I haven't met a lot of people that this are. This is why I do the work that I do because yeah. I am here to flood the earth with love and with one person at a time through the butterfly effect. Yeah. My teachings will reach the rest of the world. You know, I'm very passionate about this and. Outside of the people who I love, obviously, who are close to me, this is the thing that I am more passionate about than anything else. I am going to be doing this until the day I am no longer on the planet. It's serving humanity. Yeah. But hey, how did you know you, how did you have the confidence to even know you could do it? Because some people, you know, they might have uh, went through some difficult times or whatever or whatnot, but that doesn't mean they'll be good at showing other people the way. So how did you know you could do it? You know, what's really interesting is a lot of people look at somebody who is where I'm at and they think that it's an overnight success story. And I, I want you guys to understand that when I first accessed the information that I was here to flood the earth with love and this is what I was meant to do, it terrified me. <laughs> it absolutely terrified me. And I said to myself, how am I supposed to do that? I have no idea what that even looks like. That's absolutely massive. How is one person supposed to flood the earth with love? And I meditated and I got the message, you need to meditate for five minutes a day and pull love from the universe. You need to raise your vibration. And I was like, okay, cool. All right, step one, raise my vibration. So I started doing it. And then step two was learning that there was actually a doctor that was out there that had quantified vibration. And I read his book. His name is Dr. De David R. Hawkins. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So I read his book and I've read all of his books. And I am a big fan of Dr. David R. Hawkins. Rest in peace. Um, and every time I was like, what's next? I just meditated and I would get harmony. This is what you need to do. And I would say yes. And it, it has just been this cascade 
of me taking one step at a time towards things. And when I discover weakness or programs that are blocking me, I'm like, okay, cool. One more thing to butt through. Let's get it, right? I work with healers. I work with coaches. I have a business coach and a healer I'm working with right now. I am constantly working with healers and teachers and guides. I am reading books. I am doing seminars. I am doing courses. I am, I am an education hussy. Okay. <laughs> I love learning. So really what it comes to is when you get this inspiration, it's not about knowing that you're worthy. It's about saying yes and trusting that if you are determined and you know that this is what you're meant to do on the planet, you just say yes and you say, what's step number one? And then you just do it. What's step number two? Do it. Now that goal looks like clown shoes way over there, right? But when you take one step at a time towards it and you get closer to it, you're going to actually discover that those are the sexiest shoes you've ever seen in your whole entire life. And when you slip your feet into them, they are going to be the most comfortable thing you've ever put on and they're going to feel so good. So know that this isn't an overnight thing. You are going to grow into who you are meant to be to serve that agenda over time. You just have to keep saying yes one step at a time. Yeah, that's great. So last question. Um, who's your ideal client uh, or is it is it uh, you get a lot of couples or singles or what? My ideal client is a person who actually doesn't know what they are until I wake them up to it. And that is a love warrior. Every single client that I have ever served has had a deep desire to serve humanity in some way has wanted to give back in some way. It's there deep in their heart of hearts and it's crying, but they haven't invested in it because they're afraid. And they come to me because of some pain, a relationship has ended, their career's not working out. It's always some other pain. And then they come to me and I say, I hear your pain and I see what's going on. What you really need is a whole life makeover. And I'm just gonna let you know right now that you're a love warrior. And they're like, I'm a what? <laughs> and I'm like, you're a love warrior. You are one of the many on the planet that is being called to serve humanity in some way. What is it? And the person will be like, you know what? I've always wanted to give back to children that are suffering. I've always wanted to create a program that helps children. Or I've always wanted to feed families that can't get access to better food. That's one of my clients I'm working with right now. I've always wanted to create a nonprofit that helps South Asian women share their stories because I've been abused and I want, I want to create a nonprofit to help South Asian women. Again, another one of my clients. Every single one of them has had an agenda to serve humanity. And what I do to help that client or those clients is to really just make a whole like take their whole life apart like a puzzle and then put it back together in a way that allows for them to fearlessly say yes to stepping into what it is that they're meant to do with me as their cheerleader walking that path now to be clear i serve clients by themselves and i absolutely if a couple is struggling and they want to work with me i do work with couples I more often than not work with my couples separately so that they can be unfiltered in session because I find that my clients censor themselves if their partner is present in yeah. session, right? Yeah, yeah. So if I feel the need to bring the couple together to do sessions for us to work on stuff, I'll bring them together. But generally what I do is I have each one of them walk through my program separately. They'll do it at the same time, but they're doing separate sessions so that they can be free and unfiltered in session with me so that we can expedite the healing. So that's basically what my clients look like. Every single one of my clients that I've worked with has been um, uh, either a professional or an entrepreneur. I find that uh, pro like professionals, people that are working in the corporate sector tend to always be seeking uh, personal development and always want to be growing. And entrepreneurs obviously to serve, uh, being able to create success in their business, they have to expand and grow, right? So. 
everyone that I've created um, relationships with and worked organically with has been in that space. Uh, your typical person who works at a gas station doesn't ju generally come to work with me. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't honor those people because I very much do. All jobs are important and everyone who's working them is honored and important in my eyes. Yeah, speaking of your programs, you have quite a few and uh, you have a nice website as well. So, Thank uh, you so much. I've worked very hard on it. Um, so my my Love Warrior program is the whole program that you can go through to work with me and do the whole life makeover. The, the smaller packages are basically kind of breaking that program down for somebody that's not necessarily in a position to financially invest in the larger program, but they want to dip a toe in maybe to focus on a specific pain point and maybe just experience working with me. And then if they really love and you know, the experience that they're having with me, they can dive into playing. So that's just basically the packages are basically my program piecemeal. Okay. So if people wanted to work with you and follow you, where would they go to? If you look on my any of my social media, there is a link in all of my social media to book a soul connection with me to follow my social media as well. If you go to HarmonyWoodington.com, you're going to see buttons everywhere saying book a soul connection with me. That soul connection that you book with me is just an opportunity for you and I to get to know each other. It's an opportunity for you to share your story and for me to share mine and for us to see if we are linked and if we want to link arms to work together and for me to be your unconditionally loving cheerleader. That soul connection is completely free. So there is absolutely no investment in doing so just to discover who I am and what works for you. And then you can decide how you would like me to serve you based on what I offer. And just so you know, my offerings are everywhere from free, zero dollars. You can download my free 30 day self love connection or 30 day self love challenge. I should say that's completely free to $20 for my book all the way up to 30 K for some serious intensive work. So it's totally up to you what level you want to engage based on what you're able to afford and how much of a deep dive you want to do right now. There you have it. Like, share this episode. I highly recommend you check out her website and go buy the book on amazon.com. Until next time, we out. Peace. If you like this video, share this video. And if you want to support my channel, click the thanks tab and leave me a donation. Two, five, ten, fifty. Just click whatever tab you want to donate and leave me a, a note and let me know how the video helped you. And you click the buy and send tab. Appreciate it. Thank you.